We've got a new cover. And hello, folks. Welcome to this week's edition of Boston Bluebeat. And I forgot to mute something, and it's coming back twice. We're already off to a winning start. Um, but we would uh, we like to welcome you again this week. We are on PS4 playing Guilty Gear Exerd uh, Rev 2. Um, we would like to remind you here at Boston Bluebeat, we are very passionate about uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, it's a cause that's very near and dear to all of us. Um, on, on screen right now are two links that you can follow to uh, help out with the uh, National Black Justice Coalition, um, which is extremely beneficial to uh, uh, black members of the gay and transgender communities, um, and the Bail Project in Louisville as well, since they are still working there and we still have not seen the Attorney General's report. Um, but all that said, I'm not going to turn it over to our commentators, let them introduce ourselves, and we're going to play some good, good Guilty Gear. Hey there! Hey, what's up? My name is Gorgovich of uh, Smash Things. I'm here to talk about some Guilty Gear, drink some chamomile tea. We're gonna have a good time. I'm here to talk about Guilty Gear and stay as hydrated as possible so I can talk at length about every single player who I have been eager to see in the months since weekly attending Guilty Gear Locals. I feel like it's been a long time for me and this game. I know, Gorgovich, you've been playing in a lot of these Boston Bluebeat weeklies. I'm pretty new to uh, the Boston anime online radar here. So mm. I, I'm counting on you to immerse me in a lot of the patterns we've seen develop so far through the course of Boston Bluebeat because we've been running these weekly on PC and PS4 in alternation for like months now. So oh, I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of narratives I'm missing, uh, including the very loud narrative that has always caused any time you see a Leo mirror match. We got that on screen right now with Cosby and Bean. Oh, yeah. The Ungabunga is out in full force right now. And uh, I'm not I'm actually not sure which is which. I did not pay attention to the colors and the names. Uh, well, having I was going to say we're about to see a lot of red on somebody's light bar after that oh. flash kick whiffed. But instead, no punish was there. You return oh. to the left corner now. Cosby waits a long time on the burst. Very wise, right? Don't want to get baited by a jump cancel. First bait. Uh, absolutely not. And with Leo specifically, there are so many points in bursting where it is not safe. Uh, his combos are pretty burst resistant overall. Oh, and then Bean going to take the first round. Yeah, especially if the character, if Leo is grounded, the man can cancel into counter off of all of his normals, and it is the most satisfying, insulting burst bait you ever see, and every Leo player is going for it. They want you to feel bad. They need to stay deep in your head. Oh, talk about mental damage, right? You, that happens to you, your whole game is thrown off. 100%. Mm -hmm. Oh, opens up with an overhead. Leo pressure. Back dash, back in. Oh, just gets the cross up, and there we see it. That didn't even try to bait the burst, and he still got it. Yeah, real small hurt box on that normal from Leo. Not reaching into the burst zone. You, you see that happen a lot with characters like Johnny as well. Active frames on the counter being showed off right there. Bean survives though, not in the range of any combo and no RRC to get combo off counter from mid-screen. So instead, we go to the right side corner and we DP out by we, I mean, Bean does. Now getting some pressure started at mid-screen, crossing over. Still has his burst if he wants to try and win the round. No, I wasn't able to. Two hits of the DP. Ma imagine mashing bursts so quickly that you're able to not get hit by the second hit of DP. Certainly possible, right? Oh, absolutely. That's um, Burst is just a normal hit in this game, and invul isn't as long as really as you want it to be. Um, so there's all kinds of fun situations playing around Burst. Uh, a big portion of this game at upper levels. Oh. We see going in. And Cosby returns with more Leo things. We got those plus frames. Oh, takes his turn back. Oh, big swing, but gets counter hit for his troubles. Oh. Correctly. Yeah, see, I honestly think that Cosby was waiting for the plus on block crossover there just to DP out and DP being into the corner. You can count on the Leo player to want to use that move and maintain pressure, mix you up in the process, convert off of counter hit trades. That is. Guilty Gear exclusive mechanics right there. Yeah, you do not want to be uh, 
you do not want to be trading with Leo. Some of his counter hit yeah. confirms are juicy. I've also loved that in this game, it's possible for both players to counter hit each other, and nobody knows often who will be more advantageous. Both players are going to match that potential trade combo. Oh, absolutely, because the reward for it is gigantic. Yeah. Uh, gets the fireball pressure and knockdown. Oh, but gets thrown. This is your time to shine. Gets hit by the overhead. Full confirm. Gets caught low. Oh, and just goes out. We've yeah. got Ian putting on a lot of pressure. Oh, but Cosby DPs out. Counter hit. The pressure. Yeah, that's just simple stagger pressure, too. And <sighs> a burst. wonderfully burst. effective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, burst the bait. Gets burst stunned at the burst. end. Yeah, yeah. Th I, that's definitely what we saw. And uh, that was one of the many ingredients required to deliver Cosby a 2 0 victory here in the Leo Mirror keeping themselves in winners as we move on to the next match. I am assuming we're running first to two, as painful as that can sometimes be in Guilty Gear when you get speed ran by a Leo player. But if you're playing the mirror, you know that that is a possibility to expect and be wary of. Oh, absolutely. Just an absolutely explosive character. Uh, like we were saying earlier, the, the wrong counter hit can just end a round. Mm -hmm. uh, and Guilty Gear rounds go by pretty quickly anyway, regardless of matchup. Yeah, one thing I think that players need to experiment with in mirror matches in general, I think it's especially valuable to try and see how FD works in a mirror match so that you can learn how other players might be FDing you to push you back out of your own pressure and maybe create with punishers opportunities out of what the player intended to be block strings or something that would lead to a mix up. I, I love the mirrors in this game because of all the different defensive mechanics that allow you to learn more about your own play and find new things to implement. Yes, absolutely. Um, I feel uh, that in this game in particular, not it's not that there is an answer to someone's pressure. There are multiple answers, and you can kind of create your own openings with a combination of the various defensive mechanics. Um, through instant blocking to create gaps and maybe throw someone out of pressure that they would just autopilot normally and they thought was safe um, perhaps just as beautifully you can also create solutions that don't work because there are so many different ways to experiment you you can fail and that's also beautiful that gives an opportunity for the opponent to also find something to optimize in their play let's say one of your defensive answers is fd you want your you think pushing them away on block is the right solution so that you can quote take your turn using the space but they can read that FD and press a faster button knowing that FD also makes all attacks have worse data on block. Um, excuse me, uh, more more better data on block. So right. something that's normally, like, depending on attack level, the, you know, there's a lot of variables, but the, the mechanics work both ways. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And we're going to see how those mechanics interact in this second game with not fems, uh, Axel versus GRT Slayer. Uh, Slayer with an early advantage definitely wants that positional advantage, pushing someone to the corner, fishing for a big counter hit. Uh, not fems trying to poke his way out, getting a good counter hit himself. I, I would say poking your way out is your hope here, but it's been a pretty firm down back in the corner so far for not fems jmd gets counter hit on the way in slayer oh, command dash big hit that was actually not a combo though there was a, a drop of super uh but not fems either was going to assume that that was going to combo or had given up on the round entirely not fems by the way is definitely not an axel player either this is jmd yep. piloting the character very used to playing jam character right. who is used to moving forward constantly and up in the air rather than the grounded normal based zoning style that Axel represents. Normals into all kinds of really nice cancels. You can use a 6H with Axel to go overhead and create plus frames at the same time. Really good for corner pressure, which you can now generate thanks to that side switch parry, but not Fems is backing up here. Has a lot of meter to work with. Oh yeah. Um, Axel certainly has the potential to kind of dominate the neutral in this matchup. Able to keep Slayer out with pokes and has a lot of good anti-air pokes that approach uh, at the angles that Slayer likes to come in from. Mm -hmm. Almost uh, full but... tension now here for not fems. We haven't seen green chain YRC yet. Even having not played Axel, if I know the input for green chain, I'm going to be YRCing it. That is an infamous tool in the long life of Guilty Gear XR. 
Oh, absolutely. It, oh, okay, Red Roman Cancel works very well off Green Chain, too. And yeah, just successfully air teching, scrambling a little bit in the corner. Not Femmes takes around with Axel low. Looking like Axel high right now. High tier play hey. from JMD's Axel. Good counter, good counter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gets the Axel confirm. High oh, as hell right man. now. Seeing in the fifth dimension, parrying the pile bunker on anticipation across the screen. Ooh, yep, what's the Oki? Backs Axel, up to neutral. Axel high IQ. Ooh, active frame on that speed being flexed. Yeah, yeah, right. Giving Slayer something to run into and then scoring a counter hit as a result. And not even having to pursue, pursue Oki is not Femmes. Stray hits and backing up on their own is generating a lot of damage here. And this super is Burst certainly hitting unless we see... Yeah, that's that's a lot of damage. Hellfire bonus too. Oh, but the whiff punish. Oh, jumps out. Gold burst. What are you going to do with it? The most fortunate burst you could ask for. And now not Femmes is demanding to take this first match. Can certainly punish the full screen super. Oh, where's the punish? Oh, <laughs> gets the round anyway. I about had a heart attack just now. Whew. Hey, we, we tested Watch our that. audio levels for screaming into the mic earlier. The first one has been actually produced now thanks to the unpredictable play from both players. JMD missing the punish with an uh, aerial focus button, a slayer recovered on the ground, and a somewhat low profile state, I guess. Uh, I think that there. move just kind of naturally whiffs on crouchers. And the super uh. recovered in a crouching state, too, which is yeah. interesting to see. Oh, this pressure, though. This is very scary. This is not where you want to be against Slayer. Oh, but pokes out. Green chain. Yeah, oh, point blank green feet. chain. Whether they're walking back to go low, you can go low and use green chain, or catch somebody moving forward as GRT was. Moving forward without a normal. Not able to establish frame traps off of any of the plus frames that the overhead option after Slayer's command dash offers. Oh, I think well, that's that a drop right here. Yeah. yeah. Yep. RRC. Oh, run up throat, just do it. Love GRT not in that one frame tech window. That one's definitely untackable. It's Axel's command grab. You say yes every time it lands if you play <laughs> Axel. And then you go into Sparrowhawk stance. It's Ooh, changed a lot over the years. Bunker. Counter hit pile bunker. Not enough life from not Femmes to see the full counter hit pile bunker combo, which I'm sure could have done 50 or 60%. Oh, easily. Point blank Sparrowhawk. Uh, that's max psychological damage, at least 50 to 60% psych damage. Oh, gets him with the green chain again. How's he going to approach? GRT trying to come in from the air, get some pressure. Oh, the 6P, that's going to hurt. Oh, but drops it. Gets thrown. Gets Both players hurting equally right now. Reversal throw looking like a strong defensive option. Very difficult to meet with normals from point blank in this game, thanks to that one frame option. Yeah, you definitely have to have your spacing right. Um, there's a safe way to pressure, uh, and you have to be cognizant of it in block strings as well. If you're too close when you're trying to do certain gatlings, there is a gap. If there's even one frame, you can get scooped. Yeah, which is why it's so advantageous, I think, for a lot of characters to just keep distance. Axel's chief among them, for sure, for the range of normals and the variety of cancel options from long range normals. Oh, it gets a sweep. Oh, gets counter hit though. That's a punish. JMD has had a lot of time spent in conversation about the future of Guilty Gear, concerned about a Guilty Gear game without jam in it. Mm. But seeing this Axel, I have to say I'm inspired. I think JMD's future is bright with the character that is certainly going to be in Strive. <laughs> Axel Lowe. Yeah. I mean, certainly you could see uh, the strength of Axel transferring over to Strive um, with how they're focusing it so heavily, or seemingly so, on the neutral. Um, yeah, right? A, a character that was born to dominate neutral and to die in the corner, or die slightly out of the corner. GRT takes the round that's going to put him up to match point here just by crossing over, quickly leaving the corner just once, the one time that it was a great idea. Did, oh, oh, gold burst here from JMD. That's a breath of fresh air. And all the space taken now gives JMD a lot more room to walk backwards as he has done typically with Axel throughout the rounds we've seen. 
so you were speaking about storylines, the metas. Uh, that's that's a big one for Boston Blue Beat is the the gold burst, the advent of the gold burst. It's a, a New England thing. It's something that we all strive for. You want to get that comeback or round start gold burst and get that aggression going because I meter can I like turn into for, momentum. For sure, I, I go for the win more gold burst just to seal the deal. I, I play Sin, so you'll see me using two Voltic Deans at the same time. One in the air, one on the ground. <laughs> guaranteed nice, chip nice. setups are pretty funny. A guaranteed victory off of another counter hit. GRT making the most of swinging around with Slayer, as Slayer players do. Uh, puts piece by piece. Not really looking for full combos here, but tr truly piece by piece puts the puzzle together and takes the set 2-1 over Not Fems. Highlighted by JMD. Uh, very interesting matchup. Uh, I think JMD also said that he was going to be playing on pad, which adds a uh, another level of complexity to that. To what we just saw. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I can see Heavy Slash being important for all those Axel Bomber loops that I know you practiced before taking Fem's <laughs> Identity today. <laughs> Considering that's the button you need to press for the loop, for the special move. Well, uh, now you return to tournament organizer life, at least for a little bit. you still got some loser's bracket life left in you. Are you staying committed to Fem's identity here? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm, okay, gonna, cool. I'm just going to jump out on the commentary really quick. Uh, we might have to do a quick little reshuffle of the bracket because I, I don't know if um, I don't know if Nox is going to make it. We were going to run Nox versus Marks. Um, but if I can get... I think I can pull us together another match if you'll bear with me real quick, y'all. Um, I can pull together Aggro Craig and Radocity. All right. Looking forward to seeing some more Faust. Always love w watching that character. Hate playing against that character. Mm, God, mm. That, that matchup's a nightmare. So, so you go for the Faust pronunciation, huh? I, I've been yeah. saying Faust, and it just bring, br brings to me to the thought that in Grand Blue, in particular, Player One Gran was called Gran, and Player Two Gran was called Gran by the announcer in the loading screen. So, what? that's yeah, actually it, it, that's not okay. So in the mirror match, you'd hear Gran versus Gran, and you're like, "What? <laughs> Who's who? Is this is this the secret character that you can lock after beating all of RPG mode? You get Gran. That's just great value, Gran. Yeah, that's what you get, like." <laughs> The knockoff Mountain Dew. I hope they Mountain so, Lightning. Unfortunately, as of season two, now Gran is strictly pronounced Gran by the announcer. So, uh, oh my God, another mirror match, huh? I, I was just talking about mirrors. So I think on this one, at least if you're playing English localization, it's it's Faust versus Faust. But for our purposes here at Blossom Blue Beat, it is Agro Craig versus Radocity. And Agrokag uh, having a good start. Oh, the 6H. That is, uh, you're going to see that a lot. You're gonna I hope to. You're going to see a lot of 6H. I love natural combo overheads that people always struggle to react to. Simple cancel option that is a combo on hit, safe on block. Every Faust player is going to be using it as often as they possibly can. Oh, it pays off a lot mm -hmm. for Agrokag. Oh, but Radiosity putting in work in this first round. Mm -hmm. Gets that off screen teleport. No one knew where he was coming from. If you do want to find out where he's coming from, there is a timing window where you can YRC to freeze the screen and see teleport, and then give yourself time to react accordingly. Anti-air, air throw, whatever you want to choose. Plenty of time to react accordingly to counter hit bomb, though. That's exactly what Radocity does. Giving themselves a 50% life lead going into this round with a mini Faust on deck. Gets the chop. Booming chop. Full Swim tension in. for Radocity. Out of command grab range, though. That command grab certainly could have killed. Quick burst from Aggro Craig, giving themselves a chance to play. No Ooh, chance to eat the chocolate head. bar. Maybe the chocolate bar could have saved them from the stun or the last hit of that combo, which ends the game for Radocity. A firm 1-0 lead so far in the set. Yeah, so far we've seen it's pretty textbook. Radiosity taking Aggro Craig to the corner, uh, doing tricky Faust things, throwing 
throwing items, teleporting, uh, just non-stop pressure, dominating the neutral. Oh, but we get an early start from Echo Craig. We get the pull, but it gets burst. Uh, and Edgar Craig still takes to the skies, uh, continuing the Rekka chain from full screen. I, when that move gets bursted, there is always a hilarious outcome. I mean, watching any moment of their mirror match, it's just a series of micro hilarious outcomes, including Big Faust basically <laughs> being meaty there at the end of Edgar Craig's combo, giving Radocity a chance to get in all the way. Invincible Dust not going to work today. Way too many active frames for that. Radocity makes a great choice choosing that button. The Faust two two K, I believe it is. Yes, I think it's got three Faust hits 2K. on it. Yes, it does. Yeah, they all hit low. Yeah, it's also a fantastic anti-air, both for active frames and hitbox hurtbox ratio. D Dust, though, I mean that's the secret reversal, right? JMD just matched Dust knows that very well. Oh, definitely. Faust has a bunch of fun moves where his hurtbox just kind of goes on vacation for a little while. Yeah, and then yeah, it, then it comes back. Pardon. Among them, among those moves is his main form of movement, sprinting forward. He's in a low profile state, and a lot of mids, he can go under them. <laughs> it's like really shocking, actually. Yeah. I press slash with sin, and then Faust sprints under it and full combos me. Uh, as a Milia player, that's something I get to do with my forward dash too, and it is very fun. It's very mm -hmm. gratifying yeah. when you get to run under, run under someone's far ass or poke or projectile. Milia used to go under Beak Driver with yes. <laughs> just running. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, it is Radocity going over Agro Craig in the set by going over head several times. We haven't weren't able to see many of those overheads get blocked on either side. It's not a common thing you'll see in Guilty Gear in general. We're playing online. 6H is unblockable and unreactable. Let's see it. Let, let, let's keep seeing it. I'm sure we will as Radocity stays in winners here. Agro Craig maybe has to play JMD's Axel, not Femmes, still being properly represented by character choice. I can actually check that in the bracket before I spread misinformation, though. I think I'm going to do that no, while right, we talk right. about what's coming up next. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're good. Assuming um, the outcome. <laughs> I think there was a uh, concern about this next match. Um, do we have Novanox and Marx up? Uh, we do, but I think Nox is Nox is AFK, so I'm gonna DQ him to losers, and we're gonna run. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. We will run uh, Cosby and Marx. All right, sounds good. Up next, we're gonna have Cosby and Marx. Uh, Novanox unfortunately DQ tonight. Um, did not make it in time, so we are keeping this train moving. Uh, he's still in. He's still in losers if he manages to make it in time. But we're gonna run uh, Cosmic Marks. Yo, when are we running the Guilty Gear Lobby soccer game? Though I see Kazi kicking that ball full flame effect all over it. Must have held square for the right amount of time. I yeah, am going to miss these lobbies. Seriously, uh, they... like. All, all every Arxis lobby since these has been inferior. Let me yeah. play some soccer while I wait, or spectate the matches, which this game also lets me do. Right. Absolutely. It's just it's certainly the best iteration of this kind of lobby that they've ever made. Yeah. Yeah. Well, be sure to provide your feedback for the Guilty Gear Strive beta from four months ago. Oh, I uh, provided the them system. plenty of feedback regarding their <laughs> lobby system. <laughs> they uh, they heard a little bit from me. I, I wrote my dissertation. Uh, That's good. That's good. Yeah. We're going to be writing uh, a live dissertation regarding the Jacko versus Leo White Fang matchup. It's a difficult one to write. More of a master's thesis anytime you start thinking about Jacko and her litany of summons, tools, and win conditions that she can have over many different opponents. Uh, some of the most likely opponents to face her win conditions are immobile characters that struggle to reach her houses to hit them and break them. Leo in the corner will definitely have that problem. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, once Jacko gets set up, she can really bully Leo with a lot of DP safe options, um, ways to get around his parry. Um, she, I can, uh, I can't speak definitively because this matchup, I can't tell you. I can probably count on one hand the number of times I have seen it. Um, but I can't imagine it's great for Leo once she's set up. 
Yeah, that's almost universal regarding Jacko matchups. Uh, your hope is to win soon enough that she never truly gets set up and has three or maybe even four. Like, three houses is a nightmare already. It, it's a situation okay. that you can only come back from with, like, a very fortunate burst that hits her and the houses. Keeping her down at least to one or two is your only solution here. Uh, and that's exactly what we're seeing. The zero houses on the screen as Cosby takes this game pretty quickly, keeps the speed run going, turning mid-screen into the corner with a variety of cross-ups, command runs. Uh, the same things we were seeing work so well in the mirror match we saw Cosby win earlier, too. Right, yeah. Cosby just uh, keeping on that oppressive pressure, um, making sure that he's taking care of the houses as they come up, and maintaining all of those... Oh, getting a lot of those good parries. And then three stand overhead. Yeah, very different. Oh. And then counter hit too. I, 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 that parry was for style. Overhead combo dropped. Cosby preferring to continue playing the corner game, looking to it's experiment. Scoop. This is where it starts, though. Yeah, super important reversal of fortune, cornering the opponent with the scoop. Oh, the command grab whiff though has to burst. And that unfortunately for Mux, the burst was on the opposite side. Cosby had used the command run to get to the other side. That's a good thing to do if you think they're going to burst. You're not hard committing to baiting it, but you get a great outcome either way. Oh, and the S projectile just goes through the minions and hits Jacko and takes the first round for Cosby. The oh, P already house is getting up. in. Amazing. The house got destroyed so quickly. Just uh, pressing K, crossing up, continuing pressure. I mean, we might have to see... The problem with Marks is he's not able to afford any of the defensive options I want to recommend. Like, right. dead angle, because all the rounds are ending so quickly from the start. DP is a decent one, very small hurtbox on that secretly non-invincible DP. I do wonder if Leo has any safe meetings to use against it. Blocking it is also a great option. Great timing on burst again for Marks, reading the crossover dash to continue the combo. This is the corner situation that Marks needs to win this round. Oh, but the house is already gone. Wow, I'll, I was proven very wrong about this matchup. Leo has no problem destroying houses with just the S projectile. Just not letting Marks get set up at all. Yeah, I wonder if the onus is then on Jacko to take advantage of the amount of projectiles being fired by, say, dive kicking in on them or going under them with her advancing slide, that move that spins around. I know that move has great low profile. Yeah. Um, Could IAD as well. Yeah, IAD is a great option universally to get in on anybody in the whole game. But at the same time, I think Cosby had more than enough tension to PRC or YRC a lot of those projectiles and still be able to anti-air regardless of any air option that was chosen by Jacko. So Cosby was all set. If, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, if, um, if Jacko had YRC available when getting standing reset by Leo, you can use that to freeze the screen and see what option Leo chose after the follow-up off of the restand, which is only neutral on, on, on hit, I believe. He has faster close buttons than you in stance, but he, uh, you can still freeze the screen in time to see, and if it's overhead, you can just interrupt. That, that's my favorite single defensive choice you can make in this whole game. I only found it after years of getting washed by Leo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just empty YRC is mm -hmm. very, very strong. The, the Roman cancel system in this game um, has really, really affected the, the neutral, and you can see it in the way these players play. Um, just in the exact way that you mentioned, just empty YRC um, to see what someone is doing, to get some time to react. Yeah, yeah, and seeing exactly what Rodocity was doing bursting, GRT blocked it. Um, holding back during your burst safe combos when or using a lot of lights at the start is a great way to stay burst safe too. And Slayer gets bounced by Trampoline towards the corner, bounces Faustus across the screen with non-counter hit pile bunker. We're scrambling. There's the counter, counter hit. hit. We wanted to oh, see. Drop, drops the combo. Oh, Faust poking out, jumping out, throwing a bomb. Oh, but we're away from it. And I feel like if six P were canceled, GRT might have been able to take the round. There takes it with pile bunker. Great way to take your turn. Advancing move after Faust leaves themselves negative on block. Sure, absolutely. Do it. Yeah. Gets to interrupt the teleport startup frames. Very healthy startup frames on it. So interrupting it, a uh, great choice. Not a very healthy start from GRT either. With full health, eating the chocolate bar, 
no way to get 105% health in this game, unfortunately, so that's just gluttony there from GRT eating the chocolate. <laughs> Blocks the overhead, does not block the second overhead. Sweeps out. Able to catch that dust on Wake Up. I feel like Redocity pays such great tribute to JND with just mashing dust. We haven't seen it work yet, but Faust has definitely been spinning on his own Wake Up. Yeah. I mean, just throw it out. What are they going to do about mm. it? Oh, well, that mm -hmm. apparently. There you go. Oh, counter hit, J2K. That hurts. Well, it's a good chunk of change anyway. We got the big boy. Crawling the wrong way, though. Faust left super negative after teleport. Whiffs, Slayer on the ground, stuck in wake up. GRT not teching out or anything. Honestly, very wise choice. Sometimes being on the ground can give you a huge opportunity. Yeah. This matchup is full of wacky counter hits. Oh, wow. Speaking of. That's got to be the wackiest counter hit I've ever seen. And it was done by Mashing Dust. Must have invincible through something. And then GRT swan again. Caught, got caught in startup. This game also oh, has active wow. frame versus active frame counter hits. There's a priority system associated too, so it's yes. not always just interrupting somebody out of their startup, which I find really interesting too. It helps create a lot of those trade situations that I know are really valuable for both of these players, characters. Yes, absolutely. Um, Slayer, of course, thriving on counter hits, trying to make as many happen as possible. Guaranteed oh, danger time. We're in danger time. Forget about counter hits. We got mortal counter on anything. We saw regular B and B though from Redocity. And can you convert off this wall bounce? Yes, you can. Of course, it's in oh, slow motion. Wow! Throws the tech, gets a full confirm. Yeah, I love this game. it's the fullest of confirms, including Doctor Copter. I think that's all. That was all intended from Redocity. The whole sequence, every step of the way. Throw the air tech. Go flying in the air. You can YRC or PRC at any point, but Redocity chose to fall out of the Rekka. <laughs> wow. And then that was uh, round. I, you see how disrespectful that hammer was hitting Slayer while he was down, laying there. Definitely just saw George Bush in the background of that Faust door, by the way. Counter hit Flower. This is a potential huge conversion. Instead, it gets punished after the drop. Oh, teleport off screen. You can't YRC it if you don't see it happen in the first place. Slayer got oh, the chocolate nice bar. Turn. Oh, counter hit flower. Let's see it. And the confirm. Oh, but drops it. Mappa hunch out. Mm -hmm. The 2P was on time, but out of range of the follow-up. Rivocity picks it back up, though, just with a dive kick right on the head of Slayer. Dive kick as an instant overhead or as a movement tool that's difficult to anti-air paid dividends there for Redocity. And uh, if the tool is unanswered, there is no reason to stop calling on the opponent to answer it. Oh, absolutely not. You make your opponent show you that they have an answer to that option. And if they don't, why, why would you stop using it? Yeah, I mean, if you assume they're a really good player and that they'll figure out instantly off the first use what their response should be, then that might take you a little bit further in top level play. But if you if you have no idea uh, how your opponent is going to play against you, do what you feel like doing and see if they can stop it. <laughs> I, I, that's uh, very much a, a heart player thing to say. You, you're familiar with the three types of player theory. Yeah, how, how'd you know? I'm actually making a bit of a video essay about that right now. I plan to launch it around Monday, but we got last theory of heart, mind, and body being mm -hmm. discussed right now. Uh, I, on a scale of, rather than saying what numbers I would rate myself out of five on the scale, I would say heart and mind come first, and my body is weak and hesitant and shaky. And sometimes, like, you as a Milia player can expose that for sure, because I need to have killer instinct to run towards your pin on the ground and hold it before you can sprint with your faster sprint speed and get there and pick it back up. I need to actually be able to block uh, 6k on reaction. I can't just die from the overhead over and over. Those are kind of body tasks that I, I definitely see myself failing at regularly, which is why... I love Dead Angle so much in this game. Such a simple input for such a strong defensive option. And oh, it's yeah. rare that somebody blocks my Dead Angle and actually punishes it on block. It takes huge awareness and execution. Oh, yeah. too. 
that that's the mark of a good player to be a really good player to be scouting for that dead angle or those other defensive options and purposefully blow you up for using them. That's mm -hmm. uh, thinking that extra layer ahead, which you love to see in games like these. Uh, every micro situation can have so many different layers if you want to add layers there. If you yeah. want to add to your opponent's mental stack, you have a lot of options. Uh, Raven uh, throwing out plenty of uh, plenty of pins, plenty of feathers. Agricrag, uh, I have not seen him play Raven before. Oh, but he gets the command grab. I have to say, my mental stack gets overloaded rapidly when I see that Raven icon in the bottom right laughing his ass off at me. <laughs> yeah, uh... He's, on, he's only a little excited right now, but the potential oh. is there. Oh, he's really bummed out now that he got dead angled. Great defensive choice there from JMD, who has space to work with, but it's difficult to contain it when you're up against Raven, whose dash in the air is an attack that covers the entire screen that you, as Axel, have to be incredibly prepared to anti-air either with Axel Bomber as a DP or with uh, an air-to-air -air conversion. I don't know about air throw. It's hard to stay under that thing, but... Uh, I think you would have a difficult time air throwing it. Um, yeah, yeah, you can't be under it unless it's right at the beginning of it. And they're not using it from the range where you can be under it, really. Right. Uh, very strong option, though. Able to get through the mid-screen very quickly, and then if you force someone to block it, you then get to... It's party time. You get to do as many overheads as you want, land, do a command throw, whatever. World's yours. Raven's a great character. Uh, yeah, and he has a great match version of Axel, by the way, uh, and always yeah. has, especially so in the more unfair days. Not that fairness ever mattered to me whatsoever in fighting games. But uh, one thing, oh, a pretty fair counter hit conversion chance there from Agro Craig, but loses the corner dropping it. And now Not Femmes has a ton of space to work with walking backwards, but no tension to work with. And that's going to make this a pretty losing battle here against Agro Craig, who can convert <laughs> repeatedly two grabs in a row for the combo, a blocked Locks gold burst. Words. Yeah, JMD looking out of options here. Got a little bit of meter. See if we can make something happen with it. Oh, but gets hit, clipped high. Jumps out of the command grab. Yeah, uh, and honestly, very wise choice from JMD because if that combo were to continue off of air dash, they would have been dead either way. But if the combo was just a, an attempt to get in for a tick command grab, holding up gets you out and gives you a chance to punish. Not enough of a chance to punish to the point of getting a kill or tying up the rounds, but definitely a good thought either way there from Not Femmes. Yeah, absolutely. Not Femmes putting in the work, learning the controller, learning the button scheme as we go. Yeah, we're even seeing some HS represented now that they know where that button is. I think that was the S Camaro. Yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> oh, Daniel Bryan time. in the building. A second danger time in a row. All right, so you can convert fully off of just a single hit with Danger Time, sprint up and get your highest damaging starter. You just have to kind of turn off some of the autopilot buffering and uh, Gatling strings that you normally use in Guilty Gear, whether they're cancels or Gatlings themselves. Yeah, you definitely need to play Danger Time neutral very, very differently. The stakes are very high. Mm -hmm. uh, and some characters are definitely getting more benefit from danger time than others. Um, I would say Raven can get some very high damage counter hit combos. I play the best danger time character in the game. Sin. Oh, jeez, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I look forward to that mechanic every time. My opponent's like, hey, can we wait this out? It's a bad mechanic. I'm like, no. <laughs> Have you seen me drive a loops? <laughs> but you've had people ask you that before? Oof. It just in, like, uh, casuals, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Thankfully not in tournament. Um, tournament, though, JMD winning their first round in the set, proving tournament viability for their day one controller uh, configured Axel low here. Having a little bit of trouble getting out of the corner, though. Oh, just throwing projectiles. Yeah. It is harder to get out of the corner when you're affected by uh, the needle from Raven. It slows down your movement in every way. But GMD is so stationary with Axel that I think the needle is pretty irrelevant in the sense that it debuffs you. Right. Yeah. Able to play around it just intrinsically with his current play style. Yeah. Um, oh, but gets counter or uh, anti-aired by 5P. 
RRC, command grab twice to get that right. full horny meter. Mental damage is stacked. I am afraid of how excited Raven is right now. I don't trust him. He, his ton is out, dude. <laughs> oh, he's ready to go. He's he's plotting. You can see things going on. Oh, but not anymore. He's done. He was really excited, and he's bored now. Axel's pretty hype about this reversal Hellfire Super. Oh, and with the Gold Burst. Gold Burst has such short recovery, though. We didn't see any punish there from JMD. JMD still has their own burst, too, but will die in one hit, so it might be difficult to use defensively. You might be looking for a Gold Burst here instead. Never mind, it's just a JM straight diagonal down normal, catching aggro Craig, wanting to move around, squirm a bit, but when you're against Axel, that man has you cornered from 30 feet away. Oh, yeah, and he can just put pressure on very safely, chip you out. That is uh, for sure Axel's win condition. Yeah. And he builds meter so effectively while doing so, which means you're going to be dealing with the neutral controlling green chain YRC constantly. App, he'll be converting off of it, or uh, converting into mad mix-ups by just running up and 6-H'ing you. Yo, yo, JMD, press 6-H. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! I, that move's great. You can you can anti their jump afterwards. It's unblockable, of course, because it's Axel. And then, right. uh, that, uh, what's that move Axel has where he instantly crosses you up and is plus on block? I, I do not know the name of it. It's like yeah. 623k or something. Yeah, 623k? Uh, that yeah, that's it. Thank yeah, you for one. putting it on the screen. That Appreciate move is actually re it synergizes really well for uh, with six H offensively because people who are trying to react to overheads will have no idea that they're about to get crossed up. This Sparrowhawk synergizes with itself. One Sparrowhawk stands into another. A six hit combo into a two piece puts JMD on match point here and loses bracket against Cyber Craig. Really starting to see the uh, the mastery shine through all the hours that Fems has put into this character. And all the hours that JMD has spent watching Fems perfectly replicating the playstyle. <laughs> Making me proud as a zombie fan and supporter, a Buffalo local, longtime Axel appreciator. <laughs> I've spent so much time getting bodied by this character. <laughs> It's a familiar sight to get parried. The white flag. Axel not surrendering, though. Union Jack looking invincible right now. Tons of space to work with. Oh, Raven throwing out a ball, though. Getting pressure started. Backs up. Oh, gets hit by Green Chain YRC. The most powerful tool in Guilty Gear. Powerful Good super, though. It loses the corner position, though. I didn't know that super did that. JMD narrowly jumps out of command grab, has tons of tension, is about to get burst back, not able Whoa. to combo, but too slow of a normal, and Agar Craig wisely mashing the super to take us to match point both players here at Boston Blue Beat. Losers round one looking like the hypest match of the set. <laughs> it's super close right now. You have yeah. no idea who could take it. We've yeah. got uh, both players playing a lot more carefully than they have been the past few rounds, uh, but not Femmes pushing his way to the corner, but we're back mid-screen. It's Guilty Gear. You can't stay in one place for too long. Yeah, Axel is really quick to move when he chooses to. We saw that zippy cross-up. Great counter hit there. Nice burst. Looking extra nice because the burst sends the opponent full screen where Axel's super comfortable sparrow hawking. Uh, not very comfortable against Raven under any circumstances, of course. Oh, and wow. excellent choice of air super. Guaranteed in. This super's invincible. That command grab's gonna be whiffing. Far out of the range of all the hits, though. Here's the second one. Second time's the charm. Where did Aggro Craig get all that tension? He got it because he was playing Aggro true to his namesake. That is Aggro Craig over not Fems. Axel. What a set. <laughs> yeah. Great set all around. You love to. See <laughs> I guess yeah. I'll play. I guess I'll play Axel and Strife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that was my recommendation. I, uh, I see your lobby character says should have blocked SMH after losing JMD. Um, I think in some circumstances that's right, but in others, I would definitely recommend you mash that Axel DP because you had you got so much tension as that character. Throw that thing out there, whip him. It has huge range and like a tiny hurtbox, big hitbox. Is I it, think it's on HS. Is it on DPHS? 
I think so. Okay, I'm just really bad at inputs then. Okay, okay, okay. But you have plenty of time to figure that out as you advance further on in the bracket. Big congrats. Wait, never mind. You lost. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. I. I. <laughs> yeah. Big congratulations on getting dumpstered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but for real, that was a great set. I, I had a great time. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. I can't wait to uh, falsely announce the result in some kind of hysterically insulting way again. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. The chat definitely believes that you just got IK'd, though. They were destroyed on the screen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't seen the Axel player that used to come to our Friday Night Fights locals in a while. Uh, don't know if they're still around playing Axel, but... Oh, uh, th no, there's, there's another Axel player that I'm a little bit more familiar with the play of, but I am uh, thrilled to know that Femz is playing the character, too. Ooh, that's anyway. a big counter hit, but doesn't get a confirm. Oh, another big counter hit. Only a partial confirmed, just one piece there from Bean. Why is to be mashing the 2P there from Leo? The fastest button in that stance to contest pressure? Slayer may be one of the characters that can make Leo kind of pause in neutral, uh, prevent him from swinging quite so wildly. Now you're swinging with gold burst at minus two, you gotta let it rock. <laughs> <laughs> And then you see GRT swinging the uh, H the K button, I think it was, even after just mashing X, trying to get to the next round, take advantage of the momentum that was built with that win from GRT. Oh, absolutely. Oh, wow. Nice little uh, confirm there. It's the 2H ender, and then that gets a lot of screen control. Oh, that uh, bunker hurt. Just a little two-piece, but did you see the red life? Oh, punishes the sweep. And now we are in the corner. What are you going to do? The red life is potential. There, there's much damage to expand on. Standing reset choice is perfect there. We're seeing all these double counter hit trades that Leo seems to have much more advantage off of. Potential I'd combo like ability. See, I'd like to see some backdash cancels from GRT. Something to use the invulnerability to navigate this neutral and uh, get by those big slow buttons of Leo's. Oh, just like that. But gets counter hit for his trouble. Yeah, backdash cancel is the best defensive option in Guilty Gear X Heart. Only Slayer can do it. Uh, it makes up significantly for uh, a lot of the characters' mobility or defensive weaknesses. Oh, DP's right out. Don't want any of that pressure. Now look at that second hit low there from Bean making contact. You could take that as information. JRT likes blocking high after a couple hits on block, right when the opponent thinks that they've been pushed away substantially enough. And then we get that fireball pressure. Stay on the lookout for that. So much tension to you. Oh! The hellfire damage. Hellfire damage guaranteed that. I thought Bean would go with some kind of safer pressure. Something like uh, projectile YRC to make use of all the tension that was there. I, I find it so heartbreaking to lose in Guilty Gear before you get to use your tension. Oh, yeah, because you just know that that means that there was somewhere in that past round that you could have used meter, you could have changed your situation. There was something very concrete that you could have done that kind of, like, wasted efficiency. It always feels bad. Kind yeah. of unavoidable in some cases, but it never feels right. Never feels right to get hit by raw pile bunker as a whiff punish. You're like, damn, am I swinging harder than Slayer right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even counter hit pile bunker. Even regular ones like say, ow, ow, that's counter hit pile bunker. A little bit no. too close to the corner for the combo choice that GRT went for, but Bean definitely could have died, even despite having burst. Both players full meter. Oh, and just rot. Let's just do the. Just do it. The Slayer's forward dash can teleport through to the other side of the DP, so I was uh, concerned that that might have been a possibility there. The only way to make sure that Leo can't. Red cancel DDP is by making it with, of course. So that's going to be a popular option, I think, for baiting DP in general. 
Yeah, that's uh, definitely the move. The I think what Bean is reacting to is that big wind-up from the K-Dandy step. Um, very reactable when Slayer uses that for Oki. And if your character has a nice DP, that's free damage and you get your turn back. I see. Plenty of free damage Always on the table for that Gatling. Uh, I saw. I thought it was going to be a counter hit combo, but a combo after the counter hit works just as well for Bean to tie the score up 1 1 here. So is this the official Bat Blade stage, by the way? Yes. Um, cool, there cool. are uh, a couple stages that are fairly good for net play. Uh, this is the best one. There are several that are very, very bad for net play. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. Love to hear I, I don't know the uh, the train. I'm not sure the actual name of it. The train one that's all white is terrible for net play. If you I pick see. it, oh, I'm sorry. You, you mean uh, Edinburgh Magicopolis? I guess I did. Yo, is that? I was going to say it had to be a magic read for GRT to get that full screen super, but did not happen. Bean now with big advantage in positioning. Not a life lead, though. Oh, tries to punish the crosswise heal, but gets the PRC and gets a punish. Just blocks the H fireball. Uh, gets counter hit doing something. Pushing a button. It was an important one, though. GRT gained some space, lost it instantly, and got ran up and thrown. That's actually something that I saw, I think it was JMD versus GRT, uh, we saw a run-up throw be successful as well. You really want to avoid blocking Leo's H Fireball at all costs. If you can help it, just avoid it entirely, because blocking it gives him the exact situation that he needs to do Leo things. Yeah, and it's resource-free too. I mean, even better if he's wire seeing it, of course, but even on its own, it gives him time to get himself in on his terms. Yes, absolutely. Oh, blocks the gold burst, so we don't get meter for that. GRT running out of life, very little resources. Successfully blocking cross-up, but not respecting plus frames on the cross-up itself. Being DP's GRT into the corner, and this could be a death sentence. It certainly w Oh, never mind. Second combo's the charm. GRT mashing for life, but the RS. third one couldn't contest with the far s from bean who stays alive in losers uh in i think that's the second slayer versus leo match we've seen uh, or at least these characters have been quite prominent and i've enjoyed seeing them every step of the way every dandy step of the way every counter hit trade they're both swinging big and i appreciate it i really oh yeah it. i appreciated the dandy step comment that was very good that was very good thank you Yes, you know, <laughs> I, I feel the narrative, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take a look at this bracket, see who I might have missed so far, if any. Are we running everything on stream here? Excellent. Beautiful. Okay, cool. Larks right. goes by Isaiah McKnight. Is that cool? Cool. Exciting to see. Uh, who do they play? Oh, wait, we saw earlier. Jerko. Jack. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, I was thinking Isaiah McKnight and not Marks. Marks with an X, as in Carl, as in my husband. <laughs> right. Um, oh, we've got a Fast? Man, I was looking forward to some more Raven. I wanted to see some more sweet, sweet command grabs. They definitely were sweet, but you still have that chance with Faust. Let that man get point blank, and he will definitely command grab you and probably RRC into a combo. Or, uh, what I like to see Faust do is command grab you and take time to like fully charge an item drop <laughs> with the <a> knockdown. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, even without a full charge item drop, we got big little Faust coming in. Little Big Faust, Shades of Little Big Planet, everyone's favorite platformer. Oh, yeah. We love the big boy. We love the little big homie. Yeah. We love the clap. Oh, 2k. Good confirm. Knock Hold down. Up. Oh, 6h too early. Oh, and bomb bag hit both. Teleport from above. Oh, DP's out. Faust bounces so high off a of vertical teleport that even RRC isn't giving him any advantage whatsoever. 
Uh, Mark's with the right choice for a nice safe anti-air with DP. I do wonder if there's some kind of air-to-air -air conversion that could work there too. Maybe air throwing him back into the corner. Maybe that would have been a more optimal option. No. Uh, but we're still taken to the corner here in the second round. Uh, houses are up, but maybe going down soon. Oh, gets hit out of the teleport before he can reappear. The minions yeah, red are minions. Angry minions. Still, okay, only one house left in the background now. Was that a command grab attempt there from Mertz? Looked like uh, yeah. the very beginning of that startup animation. Yeah. Oh, the fireworks hit Fost out of his own combo. Oh, let's see. Uh, all right, I think the third one is going to be the pick. Oh, uh, I, I, what they would pick. I would have put the purple demon on the third one. <laughs> I hope, I hope that uh, came through clean. I, I make the best twenty-five percent reads here. And uh, no, no read necessary when you're pressing the far S from Faust. My favorite button is just slash with that character. Cancel it from any range into item toss, and you're probably winning neutral now. Oh, for sure. 100%. This character just gets to play uh, so freely in those ranges because of that far S button. Because of too heavy, uh, such a far-reaching low. This character can just dominate. Uh, a huge portion of the screen. Does Jacko have any good low profile options against Fares? Uh If she's within range, you could get that uh, 2D, or not yeah. 2D, the 2S. Right, slide. A slide. Um, 3H. Yeah. Thank you. I'm throwing out misinformation. You can tell I have mm -hmm. limited Jacko experience. It looks you like Marks had some good Faust experience, though. We saw Marks assuming there that Abdurkrag would go for overhead again from the range where only overhead would have connected because 2H low was out of range. I, I love that choice there for Marks. And Agrocrag, oh, getting hit by the dust. I was going to say doing a great job staying on top of the houses, but uh, gets clipped for it. Marks sees mm -hmm. what he's doing. Yeah, see, in that situation, the minions are going to be doing a good job staying on top of you, so... Reversal Super is one of the best options you got, and with all the tension that Aggro Craig had, that could have been safe on block, plus on block as well, with Red Roman Cancel. Oh, the homie coming out. But three houses are on the field. The homie plowing through them. I didn't realize that he did so many hits to each individual house. That's a neat the, interaction. Yeah, yeah, the minions dropped the combo there against Faust after the teleport made contact on block. I thought Marks had a great chance to seal it there, but Aggro Keg, one headbutt at a time, made it out of there. Houses are down. We got a knockdown. P, Tro, and him. S are here. Almost a counter hit conversion off of either of those counter hits. Wall bounce on that big H from Jacko. Looking like Donkey Kick. Minions are red, they're angry. I'm sure Marks is angry as well. Oh, certainly. I'd, I'd be angry if I was aggro Craig right about now. This is uh, not where you want to be. You have successfully aggroed Craig. There are, it's five against one. Oh, we got the helium, though. Oh, and the counter hit teleport. I can't hear the voice lines, but I know this is a psychological buff for all Faust players. There it is again, right? That range where we haven't seen much far range low conversions from aggro Craig. Mark successfully blocks overhead, but blocking the overhead doesn't get you out of there. And uh, that lesson has been illustrated beautifully before us as Agar Craig takes another round. Or, excuse me. Um, Marks. Marks takes another round. Yeah. Yeah. We got Bomb in play. Oh, gets counter hit by it. Bomb bag to destroy the houses. Agro Craig getting started. 6H. Oh, gets hit out of going my way and we get a house up. Ooh, Marks gets counter hit by the homie. But that's all right. We got more houses out. You can destroy one. I got two more. Oh, but those are going down now too. Oh, counter hit dust. Too far for Marks to pick up a solid knockdown there off of those stray hits from the spinning attack, which is a great thing to be using to try and counter hit Faust as he tries to hit houses from that range. Two D, good option there for the black hole. Faust can normally just do uh, kind of whatever he wants in that situation, but Marks very bravely two uh, Ding out. And bravery is what you need, right? It is the last potential round here for Marks. 
Last one of the tournament now. That's Agro Craig going up 2-0 over Marks. But Marks' legacy will live on forever in literature, in classrooms, in text, and in the VODs of Boston Blue Beat Week 26 or whatever it is here on the <laughs> PS4. Week 19. All right. 17. Thank you. Numbers. Anytime you want to see Mark's performance with Jacko, just remember week 17, loses round two. That was the set. Jot that down. Mm -hmm. Historic moment in gaming. <laughs> So with that decided, we can do winner's finals there. Cosby versus Redocity. We run things in proper order here at Boston Bluebee. We will not be having any loser have to play two matches in a row after losing one. Um, you, you win your way into staying on the station. Whoever wins loser semis will figure that out real quick. But first, winner's finals. Redocity. All right, uh, so let's see what the Tatami Matt character is about to do here. I'm sure Leo is going to be really frustrated. I'm sh he definitely is not excited to be dealing with the active frames of the Tatami Matt. There, yeah, there it is right there. First hit of the match, stumbling into them. Ooh, gets a good anti-air. Oh, tries to catch him with a dust, but hits him anti-air. Baits the DP. Very solid play from Redocity so far. It's the full confirm. I'd love to see that combo with a real knockdown. Viking has struggled in the past with very inconsistent combos. Very strong ground pressure. Oh, but Leo tries to jump out and Redocity with the presence of mind to kind of just air dash back and stay right in front of him with strong buttons. Strong buttons represented as frequently as possible. Pressing P low risk high reward right that's kind of the name of the game with a lot of guilty gear tools p will confirm it to itself gatling it up into an h probably get a knockdown off of it too the, the, the guilty gear is not a shy game the tatami mat is not a shy tool it is oppressive bro somehow you get buried by like a tatami mat and you feel like you're losing to an object more than the character <laughs> I mean, this character, her entire game plan in neutral revolves around that tatami mat and making yeah. you afraid of it. And then from there, she can really open up her options. Um, it, it, it's her neutral counter. and her oki. And then if she does want to read you more effectively rather than contest containing the space uh, risklessly with tatami mat, then she can like counter you and stuff and really make you feel bad. <laughs> oh, we just see a whiff counter there. Yeah, I'm interested to see how these two characters, both with very strong parries, interact. Oh, those guard point frames. I get Basic a little bit more hype when Leo parries a burst than I do than I do with Baikon. But I'm interested to see this full combo once more. IAD loop there, and a strong knockdown too. Oh, DP's right after blocking Tatami. Counter hit. I think was trying to bait the burst, but it didn't quite work out. Y'all, you're also at, with such a lead at this point in the set and in the pace of this round that baiting the burst is uh, not really essential yet. Especially not essential right now as Redocity is putting Cosby on the ropes here. Who jumps over the S fireball and just gets a quick three-piece to close out the round. So winner's final is three out of five, of course, so... We are not too worried about getting speed ran by Baikon and her litany of IKEA tatami mats. But oh, at this point, overhead Cosby, wins. you do want to put a round on the board a uh, little bit, perhaps more desperately than, than the first game. Because a 2-0 lead is really hard to come back from. Oh, absolutely. No one wants to be making that run. Uh, but it's looking like Radocity is going for this 2-0, trying to do everything in his power to close out the round. Uh, but a quick DP RRC gets Cosby out. We get a parry into a full conversion. What's the setup? Oh, very nice. Good parry. Looking to parry a burst, too, is Cosby. <laughs> styling even from the brink of defeat. It was thirsty, but, yo, you got to be thirsty for the burst. We're playing Guilty Gear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Redocity going up 2-0. 
So now it's on Cosby to make that comeback to turn this around to make some adaptation. Um, we'll see what it is. You know, even if the combo that Radocity could have bursted out of was uh, like not going to guaranteed lead to a kill in the same way the counter would, throughout the entire combo you're also building tension as Leo, and that's something that you can't be ignoring either. Oh, absolutely. Um, Leo with tension is, uh, well, it, it's party time. Yeah. Uh, he gets to do all kinds of fun stuff and make your life not quite so fun for you. It's the party you don't really want to be at. All of his military boys are there. The general is being celebrated. It's always his birthday when he has full tension. Unless he's dying with it, like Radocity, just forced to happen here against Cosby. Going on set point already. Oh, pokes out of the pressure. Oh, but parries through it. Blocks the overhead. We get burst immediately. Damn. Wait, she, is she telling me she brought a gun to this fight in addition to the tatami mat, which fires more loudly than the gun? <laughs> I mean, she's got everything. Yeah. She but, she yeah. came prepared. He's he's Little got bit. he's got an army. Yeah, and a two P there. I think Cosby might have wanted to get an air tech reset, but we didn't see it. And now Radocity has so much momentum moving forward, the momentum was cancelled with a DP that also hit as a counter hit. I didn't think it would do enough damage to kill. Maybe the counter hit helped it too. Yeah, definitely the counter hit ensured that kill there. Yeah. Um, Cosby showing signs of life. Uh, playing this neutral game. I want to see maybe some H fireball YRC. Or no YRC. Yeah, counter hit. Into the air okay. unblockable normal too. The big risk put on by every H fireball too. There's some risk on this combo here from Radocity. You can see it's doing a little bit more damage than normal. That little meter from Leo right under his health bar. You saw it was a little red. It made the combo hurt tons. Yeah. Uh, risk, a big part of Guilty Gear. Uh, a big part of what yeah. makes Guilty Gear so explosive uh, and aggressive. And you can really see it in this game. Offense. Yeah. Yeah. Tatami Matt's oh, still coming on lawn after the YRC. That thing falls on you. It's gonna put you in a block stun. Block stun is really useful for setting up tick throws like that. Radocity on the verge here of taking it, but Cosby still has so many resources and is gonna die with them getting thrown once more. Great choice to kill with a throw when the opponent may still be able to burst out of a combo. Yep. Great presence of mind, which Radocity has shown uh, very consistently throughout this bracket so far. Um, constantly thinking of the options, thinking of how to play optimally uh, and most efficiently with the resources he has. And there were plenty of them because Guilty Gear loves to give you resources as a reward for doing well. Yeah. And if you're if you're steamrolling for a big chunk of the round, closing it gets a lot easier than making a comeback ever will be. The only comeback mechanic, I guess, is Hellfire on supers, but not many characters get to make use of that often. Right. Yeah, not not super often, and it uh, depends on the character for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but that also, that quick sort of gain of resources and meter it works both ways, right? So your ability to get meter back from that one opening you make, even if you've been losing the whole round, all of a sudden you've got 50 meter, and you can really press that advantage in the opening you created. Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. Um, I, so I, it, it happened fast. I don't blame you for uh, not exactly seeing all of it. No. Oh. That makes sense. Um, sometimes after seeing that super, I feel like I need to, quick, to take a quick break, but I certainly can't. We've got a lot of commentary to do here. Agro Craig is... Uh, Doing his thing, setting up some items, has a trampoline to use, an overhead to convert off of. Yeah. Oh, gold weight. Oh, <laughs> gets hit by the cross up. I Drops love the down. empty burst from Cosby and countering a wake up pogo. <laughs> what planet are we on? Yo! <laughs> <laughs> and catches him with a low for the end of the round. Not bad. I think the assumption there must have. I, I have no idea what it was. <laughs> 
sometimes you just don't block low on wake up, you know? Yeah. You don't really have to, it's a suggestion more than a rule. Oh, yeah. punish is the burst. It does so just with movement options. Quick recognition that the burst is whipping too, Cosby's staying very aware. Oh, gets counter hit by his own bomb bag. And then yeah, with so much more time to set up H projectile, Leo's already doing better in this matchup. On the verge of taking it off of one standing reset. New Aggro Crack would poke out, tries to parry, but whiffs. Oh, yeah, parry just a little too early for the slow overhead. If that were in uh, 5S, maybe that could have gotten parried. The health is switching around. Faust was able to get that dozen of donuts and, uh, oh, gets the max blitz attack. How much Back damage can Faust do here? Corner carry is more important, I suppose. Oh, wow, whiffs the command grab. Narrowly um, short of the range. I, I think that definitely could have done it. The homie killed. came through and saved Aggro Crag that round, interrupting Cosby's combo and allowing Aggro Crag to punish for the round. That was hype. That little pixel on Aggro Craig's life bar was the pixel that could. I saw it there blinking white, letting me know that Faust was alive and well, heart beating. Uh, so Craig, looks like Craig and Bean didn't actually play. Uh, that did get skipped, so we're gonna we're gonna walk that back uh, after this round. Okay. 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 Uh, that was a uh, that was confusion. Yeah, I I, I exist in that state sometimes. Yep. Commentary, you're you're so active, you know. We just blur. got a we got a special sneak peek round that that doesn't actually count, but uh... a little flash forward for potential bracket action you can see later. Yeah. We're bringing you all this extra content, all yeah. these ex exhibition matches. Y'all should be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yep. So apologies there. There was a there was a little miscommunication, but we are gonna run Agro Craig versus Bean, uh, loser semis, two out of three. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, in the in the event that they play, one player is now up 1-0. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. No, now it's a best. Now it's a first to five. No. Um. <laughs> nice to return to the familiar format of two out of three. It's uh, it is going to be fast. It's going to be brutal. You, you are playing not to learn, but to win as soon as possible. All you need is four rounds. You got gimmicks, pull them out. Throw as many yeah. as you got, keep them coming. Overwhelm. They call it the Gish Gallop. Yeah, maybe you can make some new ones. Discover the gimmicks as you go. I know Bean is improving in this pressure right here. Agro Craig had to burst quickly. Improving and standing reset there. It was two counter hits in a row. Ooh, gets the poke, but it's an anti air. Oh, gets the crouching confirm. Bursts out. Doesn't want to nice... deal with the fast Oki. Yeah, right. And free choice of delayed burst to not say bearing yourself any damage, but keeping yourself out of the Oki situation. Oki situation on the super leaves Faust pretty close, if I remember correctly. So this comeback is definitely possible. Oh, for sure. Uh, just gotta. Well, get caught on the back dash. Wake up H. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great choice, though, because Bean knows that people want to bait Leo DP by moving backwards quickly, and some yes. people do that by backdashing more than they do blocking. Right. So you can hit so, them with just a wake up normal. Yeah, it's a very safe option, or a very safe option to scout for, I should say. Mm -hmm. As long as um, it's like a nice slow normal that isn't going to be passed through by the invincibility of the backdash in the same way that DP would. Right. Yeah. Crag showing patience on that wake up situation, just content to sit back and wait to see what Bean is going to throw out. Running out of time to wait though. 57 seconds on the clock, no life left, maybe 5 or 6%. Leo, what wow. happened? A clash on the super, and then Agro Craig strikes back <laughs> first, get the corner situation. Oh, but DP saves the day. Don't deal with that pressure. DP saves the day for Bean, but I was all for the chaotic comeback that was about to start as a result of one of the most unpredictable interactions I've seen in a fighting game. Oh, yeah, any if something clashes, it doesn't matter if it's a super, you can cancel it into any normal. Uh, yeah. Very silly situations. And I guess that means in the event that 
there could be a clash. After Super Flash, you might just want to be bashing your fastest normal to make sure they can't clash and then take advantage. Right. Uh, oh, we saw a very early gold burst from Aggro Crag. He's got a bunch of meter, but he's about quarter health now. Got to do something with that meter. Just mash dust. Full tension for Aggro Crag. Still, the burst <laughs> is too <laughs> early from Bean. <laughs> that burst got shopped. Built-in burst bait. <laughs> Reversal super. All right, second Where one has the going? purple in it. Yeah. Yo. Uh, um, how do I do this? How do I do this? <laughs> oh, and again. Try again. All right, fourth one is the purple. Damn it. <laughs> <Third>. <laughs> All right, I would have gotten body. Hey, two out of three yeah, is uh, that's that's good odds on a twenty-five percent bet. I won the tournament set already. Yeah. Two zero. <laughs> <laughs> Look how low the damage is on throw with all these guts now. Leo so deep in it, but wow. last hit of that combo in the air. Gets the round for Aggro Craig, who is uh, on the verge of tying it up. Strong performances, even in very clutch, tight situations. Last-ditch efforts are the most important efforts of all. There was uh, an effort made to convert off the Meteor combo, but the opponent was just not low enough. Right, but was able to get a combo off the overhead afterwards. Uh, oh, this yeah. is gonna combo. Not quite a kill though. What a volley! Away. Blocking his own bomb bag. Tries to six p out, but it whiffs. Oh, blitz attack, but gets the first. Meteor's coming. Meteor's coming. You have to FD these. Yeah, chip was gonna be a problem there. Just as much as the slitany of lows, normals, and other mix-up situations that being forced to respect the Meteors provides for Faust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, all of the items can be scary in their own way, but once you see the Meteor go up when you're playing against Faust, it's you have to immediately go on the defensive. Or, if possible, get out of that target area, but that is easier said than done. Yeah, and Faust can also control the screen and the camera in the same way that every fighting game character can. Right. If the meteors are at full screen, then he can just choose to not move forward, and then there's no escape option for somebody that's all across the screen unless they come forward. And Faust loves intercepting forward movement more than anything. Biggest normals in the game. Absolutely. That's uh, his bread and butter. Yeah. Not sure how he eats it through the bag, maybe under it or over it. Maybe he takes it off sometimes. Probably through the eye hole. I think that would make the most sense. Yeah, and the eye holes probably just leads to a mouth. Don't look too hard, though. I'm uh, not actually eager to find out. Much like taking off some of the costume helmets and masks that you can do in Street Fighter V with costume codes. They're just really ugly down there. You don't want to see it. Um, <laughs> Although Strive Faust is unmasked and matched my expectations. My expectation against Meteor Oki is definitely DP. Agro Craig didn't see it though and is suffering for it. Oh, we got the stun. Oh, but doesn't capitalize off it, so Agro Craig getting another chance to take this round. Oh, going my way, PRC, but gets anti aired. And that's going to be Bean getting that first round. We're now on match point. Or. Yeah, match point. Yep, both players. I'd be so panicked if I were Bean and I hit my opponent out of a stun that I could have used to kill them. I'd yeah. also panic when you're next to a black hole. When I'm panicking, I'm mashing throw. So that was the offensive choice from Aggro Craig. Bombs in play. We're going to set up a fireball, but the recovery is too long. Mm. Needed to wire C that. So we get a counter hit bomb, strong knockdown choice, counter hit overhead for Aggro Craig, building a lot of momentum, but Leo able to burst perfectly in time. Bean has Aggro Craig in the corner, but gets stunned, not able to mount offense for long enough, not able to keep Aggro Craig off of him. So it's Aggro Craig moving into real losers finals, earning their way there. Not skipping any matches. <laughs> right. <laughs> be good to see this one uh, get going again. Uh, we'll see if it shakes out in a similar direction. Um, because really, at the point that we saw in that last matchup, it could have gone either way. How funny, too, that uh, now Aggro Craig has to run through the gauntlet of Leo players. Yeah. 
it's uh, getting a lot of that matchup experience for sure. Yeah. But you might get falsely conditioned by one Leo playing differently in certain situations than another. I've had that happen to me in tournament before. Two players of the same character consecutively. It, it's, it, it can be really tough. Oh, absolutely. You've got to uh, be willing to uh, switch out of that mindset from the last game uh, and forget the habits that you just learned. Yeah. Yeah, or uh, one solution, make a game plan so effective that you never get to see any of your opponent's habits. It's definitely possible with the strong offense in Guilty Gear XR. Oh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> it, sometimes everything just goes right for you, and the opponent's choices don't really matter so much. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the homie coming. He's coming. Oh, Leo tries to get over with the dive kick, but there's a big trade. Fast in the corner. Just dash in. Just go for it. And then parry, counter hit, burst. We Good have choice. not seen any parry attempts get punished. I'm pretty sure there's only two recovery frames at the end of that frame. It is uh, difficult to learn the punish timing, but once you lab it, it's um, it doesn't get too, too difficult to be consistent with it. It uh, certainly can be frustrating on net play, though. Yeah, press it a little bit earlier. Uh, beat that two-frame delay, press the punish attempt a little earlier, or maybe always choose the same button speed so that you don't mess up and get double parried, which I know every Leo is doing. It's it's either parry oh. into DP or parry into parry. Yes. There, there, are there any other options? I actually don't think so. What do you do okay. when you're falling out of the sky? Backward air dash into the Leo Tornado! Great choice for the air to air intercepting aggro cred. Gets hit by 6H. What's the move? 6H, YRC, 2H. Give See him again. Some stimulus Six. to react to. And, oh, a, a second conversion from a raw counter hit Dr. Cup. <laughs> the 6H YRC minigame saw all of the potential uses right there. We were even about to see a 6H YRC 6H. Agro Craig feeling good about that move right now. Yeah, oh, yeah. We just got a. Uh... We got a masterclass in the uses of 6H YRC just now. Yeah, we got yeah. every single option displayed to us very clearly. Uh, Faust players take note. I have I have seen Craig once do 6H YRC 6H YRC 6H. Uh, I believe it. it the works. absolute mad lad. It, it 6H, works. 6H YRC can grab is the end of that game. That's my favorite thing in the whole world. Oh, yeah, 6H YRC <laughs> Yomi. Yeah. Oh wow. Ooh, six H counter hit. Or maybe six it's six H really pains. Let people run into it. Lots of active frames, slow startup, high priority. It's an H button after all. Leo stuff. Uh, pressure. Very, yeah, definitely Leo stuff. We saw raw parry, hellfire, almost killing just with a stray hit and another counter afterwards. Leo stuff through and through even down to the amount of parries that went unpunished. This is this is what I'd love to see in Leo tournament play. It's usually what happens because the Leo players have people so frustrated and scrambled. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a meme, but it's a meme because it works. Leo, very scary to deal with. Yeah. Um, that parry is just such a strong option. Yep, yeah, one of the most rewarding hits you can land in the corner too. And uh, built, in, built into a character who can switch sides at will while maintaining pressure on block, running through you. Yeah. Parries the bombs and the bomb wow. bag. A oh, double wow. bomb combo there from Aggro Craig. Man's playing grenade games right now, playing shooters, I guess. Then he got the chocolate bar. Uh, this is for death situation. I think fourth. Yeah. Oh, oh. Third. Okay. Well, I didn't. We neither of us said which icon we actually expected so i guess we both lost <laughs> oh well you, all right you just okay. said you just said fourth and when people pick something i inherently assume that they're going for the angel so you know yeah yeah you're right you're right but sometimes i like to imagine that i'm in a good situation and then i'm the one choosing where to place the purple one. <laughs> oh, I, I would that would require me to pretend i was playing faust so <laughs> yeah yeah right can't go into I, that mindset it gets dark down there it definitely does. It is a void in the eye hole of that bag right there. There's literally nothing you can see. You stare into the eye hole, and the eye hole stares into you. Did Aggro Craig just get orange tension right there? Are they going to get a chance to use it? Not this time. No. 
full conversion from Cosby. So we're going 1-1. One, one. Uh, it is best of three, or best of five. Um, yes. So, really, not seeing a strong leaning either way. Both of these characters, both of these players showing that they have the capability uh, to just dominate a round. Yeah, and sometimes they take turns dominating a round uh, to the extent that the rounds end up really close. I mean, in that last one, we were down to like 30% life left for both players. Yeah. Oh, Meteor's coming. Tries to parry it. Ugh, man. I love that idea. Nobody knows the Meteor timing better than Faust players. It's very difficult to outplay them in that regard using such a small... I mean, there are a lot of active frames on parry, but you still have to be precise. Yes. I would have loved to have seen it work. Hard knockdown for both players. Take some time to breathe. Parries the bomb bag. Meteors are coming. Yeah. There it's they hit. are. Perfect interruption. But you can't blame Cosby for wanting to stay aggro. Tons of tension to stay aggro here. Counters yes. the reversal super. That one... Tries oh. to counter the burst. <laughs> that burst was not even going to be in range. <laughs> he wanted it. He wanted it, though. Incredible thirst. I mean, I can't say I know more about how big the hitbox for Leo's counter is, but I, I'm, I'm really uncertain about if that burst would have made contact with the counter. Just smash dust. Oh, but what? Bomb Bag hits both of them. Meteor again. What is this RNG? And the Meteor oh. hits so high in the air that all of them made contact at the same time. Cosby, in a flash, has lost 50% life just to the RNG. I lost the run, I lost the round RNG. Angel Cosby on the third. Forward. Yeah! Perfection. Yo, second after sure. I wasn't... Oh, it wasn't damn. Angel. I, gu I, I mean, guess I was wrong. It is at least the lowest damaging of the demons, so... Uh, you, you you can have a fear of victory there. You definitely earned it. I, I'm going to feel good about myself. Yeah. Either yeah. way, I think. I feel good about this YRC potential we have for both players. Wha Yo, mash dust, mash dust. <laughs> and then they both sprint straight into the bomb. A post-game two-piece there for Aggro Craig, taking us to game point. Whoever wins this goes up 2-1. One of the most important rounds of the whole set for sure. You want to get that momentum going into that last game. Vertical momentum. Plenty of it now for Aggro Craig flying to the sky, getting comboed by Cosby after yet another counter. Oh, we got Bomb in the corner. Patient Ta blocks. Oh, and then runs out. Oh, Incredibly oh, patient, but not so patient that you're not going to stop the combo for fear of the Bomb, right? I mean, we have standards here. We're Guilty Gear players. you got to do the damage. Yeah. you got to make the man's life bar go down. Oh, what's the point? Oh, gets hit by the meteors though. Tries to go for a safe confirm. Oh, gets the round though. And uh, we're gonna go up 2-1. As Aggro Craig, I'd be a little dismayed knowing how much luck might have been used with the amount of meteors in those last two rounds. I hope it sticks around, thankfully. We're not on any item rotation. There's plenty of meteors left in the ammo bag here. The pockets of Faust. Good confirm on the counter. Aggro Craig trying to burst, getting out of the corner. Does not want to start this round this way. A little homie held one out. Oh, runs through the oil, doesn't care. I think Aggro Craig does a great job of maintaining tension pulse by using so little tension early in the match. Already we're at full meter for Aggro Craig. And I mean, that means we might see an eight item super. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see it. <laughs> I'm willing to bet we're going to see more reversal supers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. To, it, but... We're up against Leo, we're up against Cosby's Leo. That, that's got to be the wisest decision, but at this point, so little meter has been spent. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Wires can get in time twice just to make sure, mashing it. Agro Craig loses all the meter, but feels fine about it because that was such a powerful defensive option represented. Cosby would have to have done the counter only after the super flash that's the only way to actually beat it if uh if faust has all that meter let's see gets the con uh counter confirmed crosses up just throwing lows oh but dusts through the overhead 
Um, not a lot of damage, but Foss can get something started. Oh, but that 6p counter hit is a bad situation to be in. We got little big Faust though. Sackboy's best friend. Little big oh. Planet Forest protagonist. Uses the dust to escape the little big homie though. Uh, good presence of mind. Uh, this is this is Cosby's round to lose here. It's definitely Agro Craig's round to try and make a highlight real comeback out of with all that tension. Not gonna get to do it. Very floaty, very punishable is a high drill. Way out of the way was Cosby getting the punish and putting themselves on set point here. That was a good counter hit confirm into the meteors. Ooh, catches the tech. Uh, Leo already at half health. Scary place to be. I don't know about the character's guts ranking, but he's definitely just about at half health and it's about to be 35% left. Akrapeg securing the corner as well. That is such a hysterical combo off dust. Holding the burst is Cosby, waiting for the next thing. Getting prone uh, though, not they're not gonna be able to burst that damage. Agro Craig dropping the combo early, scouting the burst, um, but then reacts to Cosby not bursting and throws him. It uh, shows that these players are thinking very, very quickly and making decisions at a very rapid pace. And always cognizant of what's on the screen. The game gives you a lot of information. The burst meter is hella detailed. The tension meter pulses to show you who is being more offensive, and that gives you a gauge by which to measure how much more aggressive you should be. Right. Uh, meter is life in this game, and if you can have mm -hmm. the pulse, you can really, really swing things in your direction. Yeah, risk gauge flashing is a big indicator too. Small risk on this conversion here from Cosby. Agro Craig getting thrown to just on the brink. Full, oh wow, full charge blitz. That gives Cosby plenty of time to get the counter ready. Does so and kills with it. Cosby advances to set point once again. Throwing items. Cosby just going in. He can smell blood. He wants this round. Gets the counter hit. Good burst from Echo Craig. Uh, gets thrown for his troubles though. Gets caught low. And caught looking low like a speed again. run here. Blitz got hit by the low. Cosby's looking like a speedrunner right now. Small conversion. Dust is so slow that it's unparryable. Agro Craig with the genius reversal option, but still stuck in the corner. Tensionless and getting killed by the delayed air attack. That's Leo's standing reset tool, but you can also use it to win the set if you're Cosby. Winning 3-2 over Agro Craig in the longest and one of the most exciting sets of the night. I believe it's also uh, a set that has set up our grand finals a run back of winners finals yes. between cosby and um excuse me i forgot the player name radosity, radosity. <laughs> radosity. Yeah. thank you i was thinking like radiosity radosity either way rad player who has been uncontested i was really happy to see that uh biken at such high level i assume we're gonna see it again rudosity ah. they say in the chat rudosity <laughs> Rudo City. Oh, we get to see more bacon. It worked well last time. Uh, let's uh, let's throw some mats at him. Decorate this man's house. At him, on him, under him, over him. I mean, they're going to be everywhere, and they're all going to be plus 40 on block. They might even need it to be plus 80 on block or something. <laughs> Look at those Air parries. Time. Wow. Uh, that is an answer to the H fireball that I have not seen before, but I really liked that. If that's done from far out enough, I wonder if Leo might be able to DP it as she travels forward. He or if it probably could. Out. You would need to be definitely paying very close attention and be ready to react. Oh, uh, yeah, but when you throw fireball, you lose charge. W would he get the charge back in time? I don't know. Lots of things to explore in this matchup, and you have plenty of time to think about them through the long combo of Radocity here, showing us once again how powerful Biken can be in the corner, especially given that instant air overhead. Just another stress factor to add into the opponent's mind. They're already overwhelmed. Yeah, and Radocity uh, using that overwhelming pressure to take the first round. Um, yeah. We're seeing a lot of pressure coming in from Leo, though. Oh, immediately turns it around. 
uh, one thing I really love about this game, there are a lot of strong air options people love to approach from the air, which opens up the possibility, if you're in the corner, of just casually walking out underneath them and then immediately reversing the situation. Uh, very yeah. strong option in this game. And the corner is incredibly powerful. Really, really more powerful than the life lead, I think. Especially with a lot of the set play characters, such as Baiken, such as uh, what Leo can feel like he's doing to you when speedrunning you. Except yes. it's never going to be as airtight as Tatami pressure from Baiken. Ooh, Counter hit H, out though. Of that Tatami pressure, though. I think Radocity is wise to hold the burst. The next round could just be more of a steamroll than how close that last one was. And also, you know that Leo players, such as Cosby, are looking to counter burst all the time. I was surprised we didn't see it attempted again, honestly. Maybe that's more of a bean thing, though. Oh, never mind. We saw it right wow. now. He was looking for the right opportunity, right on cue, right as I discuss it. He heard you, and he yeah. was like, yeah, watch this. They Yo, certainly this love to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another one for you. Not a burst this time, but a flashy combo either way. And an overhead into stun. Now we see a round. quick 1-0 from Cosby, who has dramatically changed the course of this set by going up 1-0, already defying the expectations that Winner's Finals had set for us. Yeah, we're uh, really loving the adaptations, um, and yeah, DP is right through that pressure. That's not real. Don't got to deal with that. Uh, ooh, counters the tatami and gets a counter hit. The gears are turning. The guilty gears are turning. This man's head. Ooh, but gets counter hit. Bursts out. That was going to be quite a bit of damage. Has an answer that time for the parry, but gets thrown. And I saw that uh, we saw a big red X on the character because they couldn't Roman cancel something. And I, I have no idea why or what was going on or what whiffed. <laughs> It moved too quickly. I, yeah. I would have to look That's at the bot. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely interested in doing that. We're putting on a wonderful show here. A uh, wonderful show of all the different kinds of conversions that a character can get. Radocity almost picked up another one right there. Scrambling for the corner, though, is Cosby. Had a chance. Still, ha Now we return to mid-screen. The Tatami mat actually whiffed, and that kind of set up a quick low there for Radocity to take the first round of game two. A long round for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm noticing that these rounds in Grants are going uh, a little longer. We're not quite speed running anymore. This careful neutral that's being played by Rudocity. Um, using the Tatami's to get out. Oh, but we got the restand. Oh, but just punches right out. No respect on the restand. I need to pay credit to Cosby for using one of the slowest air specials you can possibly do to still capture Rudocity's air movement. I mean, that, that's a read very far in the future. It's not the riskiest read. You can always YRC with the amount of meter that Cosby built, but it's a wonderful one nonetheless. Oh, that counter hit. Not too much damage, but able to get good advantage. Gets another parry. Is that death? That's death. Picking up what looked like corner combos at mid-screen with a real close counter. I think it was a counter hit counter, <laughs> which... Must lead to more damage for Baikin than normal. Yep, parry on parry the... one thing, and then catch Leo in the startup of his next thing, because he's always very busy with his own intentions. Yes, he definitely wants to uh, play his game, and he doesn't care so much about whatever game you want to play. Yeah, and neither do his players. Cosby has <laughs> the opportunity to start that game right now. Two parries in a row, of course, that's the Leo game we know and love. Like you said, parry into parry or parry into DP. Those are, those are your <laughs> options. And, and one of them will lead to a walk bounce in the corner. Yeah. Did that projectile just get reflected? It did. The parry reflect projectiles. Amazing. I never even knew this. Yep. Uh, it's a very good tool. Very strong. Uh, helps Leo deal with some problematic characters. <clears throat> Kai. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I can see where the problems would be found very quickly. Uh, Redocity is quick to find solutions, though, taking the lead in the set now for the first time, having won the last game, and now this round. Bursts to uh, get out of the corner. Goes right through the fireball. Ooh, gets the counter hit. Great out combo, but it doesn't matter. It still counts, it's still damage. 
Yeah, only that third hit was not a combo. The rest of it was clean. The tech trap was very clean there too from Rodocity. That Those two combos looked like one because the health bar just couldn't keep up with how fast the damage was being put up. Parries the tatami. Oh, parries the reverse pressure and then gets the confirm. Rodocity going up. I wonder if you're comfortable. I think as Cosby, you have to start getting comfortable with the idea of punishing Viking parries when you think she is most likely to counter your pressure with parry. But it's so against your instincts, right, as Leo, to just stop what you're doing, crossing them over, doing overheads and lows, being plus on block. It's so unlike a Leo player to consider what the other opponent is doing for them to yeah. actually have to care. <laughs> But I think the, the mileage that Leo might be able to get on the punish, or maybe a corner situation, is it, it has to be worthwhile, and it has to come out soon because Rodocity has a huge life lead in what could potentially be the last game of the set here. Very brave parry, gets counter hit by a Tatami for dashing in. Um, this is Rodocity on tournament point. Yep, and Big it counter seems, hit though. while the first game and second game had very slow rounds, they've suddenly picked up pace again very very quickly with Rudocity steamrolling forward. Cosby though, matching that intensity with the start of this round, already has the opponent down to 30% life, but gets it's thrown strong. running through. I think Rudocity's defensive options of mash throw and parry are both working out magnificently here, rewarding themselves with a corner situation and a full bread and butter combo. We're about to be a Tatami wire C as well. Let's see another instant overhead. On no, the, goes for the counter hit instead. On the verge of getting stunned, also on the verge of dying. Holding the burst though is Cosby. Yeah. Quite Kinda brave. Burst. Short hits. Yes. Yep. Good parry. Doesn't get the OTG kill, but falls uh, with a normal and ends the tournament. Rodocity will take it. Up yeah, that three one over Cosby. The ninety degree stab there from Rodocity. One of the hardest buttons to anti-air in the game, and we didn't even see it need to be anti-aired until the last hit of the set. Congrats to Redocity for winning 3-1 over Cosby, winning Boston Blue Beat Week 17 for Guilty Gear X Hard on PlayStation 4. Uh, Cosby, though, certainly put on a wonderful show with Leo across all of the opponents they ran into. It was nice to see the mirror match for the opener of the whole night. I had a feeling Cosby would go far. And uh, I have good feelings about this game all the time in general and would love to continue feeling them commentating in two weeks, maybe even next week, considering we can commentate PC regardless. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I always look forward to seeing some good, good Guilty Gear. Uh, it gives me that warm, fuzzy feeling on the inside. That's the GG, GG, good, good Guilty Gear. Yes, indeed. Well, this was a, this was an awesome night. I would like to thank everyone for coming out. We had a bunch of new entrants. Uh, this is actually the first time we've seen uh, Cosby. Uh, at the at the very least, uh, I you know I played him at locals a while ago. It's the first time I've seen him on stream. Uh, it's the first time we've seen Redocity. It's the first time we've seen Bean. Uh, it's the first time we've seen not Fems. Uh, Made an appearance. <laughs> yes. uh, it's, Mysterious uh, you know, Axel player. Yeah, this weird Axel player showed up. Uh, no, but but really, it's really nice to see this scene continue to grow. Monkey, it's awesome to have you here, man. Um, it, it's just really, it's really cool to kind of see everybody coming together like this. Um, so we do, we do run. Uh, you know, uh, like you said, we alternate between uh, PS4 and PC. Uh, so next week we'll, we will be back here at 8 p.m. on the PC platform, and the link for that will be up. Uh, in a Discord briefly and tweet it out on all our socials uh, at Boston Blue Beat. Um, uh, Monkey Business and Gorgovich, where can people find you? You can find me uh, at twitter.com slash Gorgovich, G O R G O V I T C H. Uh, I post about fighting games, uh, I shout out these tournaments, I commentate fairly consistently. Um, yeah. It's been nice to get to know you tonight, Gorgovich, because we've interacted in Grand Blue, a game that has had plenty of anime players from all different backgrounds, uh, but we haven't actually talked. And to know that I, I feel you have a Guilty Gear base already in kind of the same way that I do in anime, so uh, I'd be excited to commentate with you again in the future or even play, because that would be great. We, we, uh, get, we, get, we gotta run the Sin Milia matchup. It is so funny. <laughs> uh... 
I'm probably yeah. gonna counter pick Kai there. I do oh. not like that matchup. <laughs> hey man, Sin Sin's gonna slide under Kai projectiles either way. It's true. Uh, yeah. Unless they go through a uh, dust gate thing, whatever that's called, the seal. Um, yeah. I am also available on Twitter at FG Monkey Business and. Also, you can just hear me here next week or in two weeks' time because I love Guilty Gear too much to not be paying as close of attention to my local scene as possible. So, yeah, seriously. That's really um, hard man. Yes. It's, it's awesome to be back and seeing new players and old and uh, kind of expanding the, the region as well, meeting New England folks outside of Boston like Gorgovich. Seeing the Axel play from JMD, which I never would have seen at locals, where you'd be playing Jam, of course. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, let's let's not count on the Axel yeah. showing up too too much in the future. But um, yeah. oh yeah, there's we'll the, always have our memories. There's the yes. sick plug. Always, it's you never know. You never know. We'll see when the Strive Strive beta comes out next time. And, um, but yeah, no, it's awesome. I'm really no. Well. I don't eat glue, Radocity. You walk that back. Um, what I do do <laughs> is uh, I, I do believe strongly that uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, and uh, I, I do recommend donating if you have the funds to either the Louisville Bail Project or uh, the National Black Justice Coalition um, to help benefit uh, transgender and queer uh, black youth. Um, they are both very, very stand-up organizations, um, and we're... We're very proud of the work they're doing. Uh, Boston Blue Beat is also, um, uh, tangentially, we also support, uh, uh, one of our members runs uh, System Arcadia. They're going to be doing a uh, cool show um, called Shakunetsu Underground, for which uh, uh, benefits will be going towards uh, the National Black Justice Coalition as well. So if you check them out at System Arcadia, they'll be doing that donation fundraiser as well. Um, just part of everything you know we're trying to do up here in the Boston community. Um, but for now, it's been a been a lovely evening. Been some great Guilty Gear, uh, Monkey Business, and Gorgovich. It's always a pleasure. Um, and uh, we're gonna sign off. Uh, everybody, uh, be excellent to each other and uh, keep it spicy. <laughs> <laughs>